This towering giant stands motionless in a field, its blades frozen against the wind. But when it stirs, something remarkable happens. With a slow, steady spin, it captures invisible power and transforms it into electricity that lights up our homes. Why does it only have three blades? Why are they so enormous, yet turn so slowly? What's hidden inside that sleek, white tower? The answers aren't just mechanical, they're ingenious. This isn't just about wind and motion, it's about engineering mastery, harnessing nature with precision. If you've ever wondered how wind becomes electricity, you're about to find out. Let's dive in. The simplicity behind the spin. Stand in front of a basic wind turbine and hold up a tiny motor with a plastic blade. Give it a spin and you'll see voltage come to life. At its core, that's all a wind turbine really is. A machine that captures the wind's kinetic energy and turns it into electricity. But scaling it up from a school project to a towering megastructure that powers entire towns is where the engineering brilliance begins. Wind itself is invisible, yet we can feel its energy. It can push against our hands, turn pinwheels, or spin the sails of an old windmill. That same force, when captured correctly, can generate clean power for entire communities. All it takes is motion. Attach blades to a simple DC motor and spin them. You'll notice a voltage on the output. That's electricity being created right in your hands. The principle remains unchanged whether you're dealing with a tiny desk fan or a 300-foot turbine. The wind turns the blades. The blades rotate around a shaft. That shaft connects to a generator. And as the generator spins, it produces electricity. The faster the shaft turns, the more voltage is produced. But there's a problem. Wind at ground level is often weak and chaotic. So we go higher. The higher we build the turbine, the faster and steadier the wind becomes. That's why those towers rise so high. It's not about size for show. It's about reaching stronger, cleaner, more efficient wind energy. And it all begins with that first simple turn. Why so high, so slow, and so massive? At a distance, giant wind turbines appear calm, slowly spinning in the wind like gentle giants. But their design isn't lazy. It's precise. The higher you go, the faster and smoother the wind becomes. That's why turbines are built so tall. Up there, the wind isn't broken by buildings, trees, or terrain. It's stronger and more consistent. And stronger wind means more energy. With greater height comes longer blades. Longer blades can sweep a larger area and capture more kinetic energy. But the tips of those blades already travel at tremendous speeds, even with slow rotations. If they spin too fast, they risk breaking the sound barrier causing shockwaves and potentially damaging the turbine. So the whole system is designed to spin slowly, not because it's weak, but because it's strong enough to resist going too far. Then comes the question of blade count. Why three? One blade is unstable and won't start on its own. Two blades are better, but they still wobble and produce less torque. Three blades strike the ideal balance, efficient, stable, and cost-effective. Add more, and you start losing efficiency due to drag and weight. So yes, turbines are tall, slow, and massive. But every part of that design is there for one reason. Maximum energy from the wind, with minimal waste. What happens inside the tower? From the ground, it's just a smooth, tapering tower with blades at the top. But inside, a wind turbine is a carefully engineered machine, more complex than it looks. Step inside the tower and you'll find a narrow access ladder running straight up for engineers. Power cables also run down through the core, 
carrying electricity from the top to the grid. At the very base, there's often a transformer that steps down the voltage before distribution. At the top, where the tower meets the blades, things get interesting. A massive bearing and a gear ring allow the entire top section, called the nacelle, to rotate and face the wind. Motors engage with this ring gear, guided by a wind vane and anemometer on top that constantly track wind direction and speed. Within the nacelle, the slow-moving main shaft connects the rotating blades to a gearbox. This gearbox ramps up the speed, sending it into the generator. That's where mechanical energy becomes electrical. To control everything, there are brakes, sensors, control panels, and pitch motors to adjust the blade angles. Every part works in harmony to keep the turbine aligned, efficient, and protected, even when the wind changes direction or becomes dangerously strong. Now, first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. How the blades actually work. Wind turbine blades aren't just big fans. They're shaped more like airplane wings, designed not to push against the wind, but to be pulled by it. Each blade has an aerofoil shape, curved on one side and flat on the other. As wind flows over the blade, it moves faster over the curved top and slower beneath. This speed difference creates a pressure difference, lower pressure on top, higher underneath. That imbalance pulls the blade upward and forward. This is called lift, and it's what makes the blades spin. But it's not just about shape, it's about angle. The angle between the blade and the wind, called the angle of attack, is constantly adjusted. A steeper angle increases lift, but go too far, and the airflow becomes turbulent. That causes drag, which slows everything down. That's why large turbines can tilt their blades using pitch motors inside the hub. This lets them fine-tune the lift, optimize rotation, and prevent overspeed damage during high winds. The blade's twist along its length also matters. The tip moves much faster than the base, so it needs a different shape to maintain efficiency. Every curve, angle, and twist is engineered for maximum power with minimum resistance. The role of the generator and gearbox. Once the blades start turning, that motion needs to be converted into usable electricity. And that's where the gearbox and generator come in. The blades spin a central shaft at a slow but powerful pace. This low-speed, high-torque rotation isn't enough to generate electricity directly at the frequency our homes need, usually 50 or 60 hertz. So, the shaft connects to a gearbox. Inside, a series of gears, often including a planetary stage and two spur stages, multiplies the rotation speed, sometimes by a factor of 100. That means even if the blades spin at just 18 RPM, the output shaft can reach 1,800 RPM, which is ideal for the generator. Connected to that high-speed shaft is the generator, which transforms mechanical motion into electrical energy. In large turbines, a doubly-fed induction generator is common. It uses coils, magnetic fields, and precise electrical control to maintain a steady output, even when wind speeds fluctuate. To prevent damage, brakes are installed to stop the shaft when needed, especially during maintenance or storms. The blade pitch and brake systems work together to regulate rotation, keeping the turbine safe while ensuring it delivers a smooth, steady stream of power to the grid. Why only three blades? It's a question many ask. Why do almost all large wind turbines have exactly three blades? The answer lies in the balance between physics, efficiency, and practicality. Each blade adds lift, helping the turbine spin and generate electricity. But each also adds drag, which slows the system down. 
With just one blade, the turbine becomes unstable and can't self-start. Two blades improve balance and speed, but they still wobble slightly and require special counterweights or mechanisms to stabilize. Three blades, however, create perfect rotational balance. They spin smoothly, resist wobbles, and catch enough wind to generate serious power. Could we add more blades? Technically, yes. But as we add four, five, or six, the gains become minimal. More blades increase weight, drag, and cost without boosting performance significantly. In fact, too many blades can actually reduce efficiency. That's why three is the sweet spot. It captures enough wind, spins steadily, and keeps the system cost-effective. Smaller turbines, especially those in low wind areas, sometimes use more blades. They're not chasing efficiency, they're chasing motion in weaker conditions. But for large-scale energy, three blades give us the best mix of speed, strength, and simplicity. Controlling the wind, safety, and smart adjustments. A wind turbine isn't just spinning freely in the wind, it's constantly adjusting, watching, and protecting itself. This is where control systems come into play. Every turbine has a cut-in speed, the minimum wind speed needed to start generating power. Below that, it remains still. As wind speed increases, the turbine produces more electricity. But there's also a limit. At very high speeds, the turbine reaches its cutout speed, where it shuts down to prevent damage. Between those points, it's all about control. Sensors on top of the turbine constantly track wind direction and speed. A wind vane points the way, while an anemometer measures how fast the wind is blowing. The computer system uses this data to rotate the nacelle, the entire top section, so the blades always face directly into the wind. Motors and brakes work together to keep it aligned and locked in position. Blade pitch is also adjusted in real time. Too much wind? The blades tilt to reduce lift and slow the rotation. Wind drops again? They tilt back to catch more energy. All these small, smart movements make sure the turbine works safely and efficiently, no matter how unpredictable the wind becomes. From a gentle breeze brushing your face to massive blades carving through the sky, wind carries more than air. It carries power. And through brilliant engineering, we've learned how to harness that invisible force with balance, precision, and care. Every part of a wind turbine, from its slender blades to its quiet sensors, works together to turn motion into light. It's not just a machine, it's a quiet revolution spinning above us. Next time you see one turning on the horizon, you'll know exactly what's happening inside. And maybe, just maybe, you'll see wind a little differently. Until next time, stay curious.